Welcome to Electron Online. Here's another example of how to find the moment of a number of forces. Notice there's six forces on this wedge. There's a wedge right here. Notice that it is 10 feet long. It is seven feet wide and six feet high on one side. It comes all the way down to the XZ plane on the other side right here. There's six forces. Notice there's three couples. There are two four pound forces here. There's two five point forces here. And there is two oh, seven point forces in this direction on the surface of the wedge right here. We're trying to find the total moment caused by those six forces, of course, those three couples. The reason why we chose this problem here is because it is very difficult sometimes to see the orientation of the moments caused by these couples, especially when they're diagonal across a wedge like this. And so that's why it's a good problem for us to take a look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the moments of the three couples and add them together. We'll start with the easiest couple, that would be the two four pound forces because you can see the line of action is like this and all we have to do to find the moment of a couple is simply multiply the force of one of the two forces and uh, times the distance between the two lines of action, of course the perpendicular distance that is. And so let's say that we're looking for the moment of the four pound forces, I'll call it m sub 4 to denote that it's the couple of four pound forces and so that would be equal to the, the four pounds times the distance, uh, we don't really need an S there, we can just get four pounds, times the distance between them, which would be 10 feet. So the moment is 40 foot pounds, but now what is the direction? Well, what you can do is you take your finger and point in the direction of one of the four pound forces and curl it to come down to the other four pound forces and your thumb will stand perpendicular away from the plane made by those two forces that would be in the positive y direction so it's 40 foot pounds in the y direction so that's the moment caused by the two four pound forces now let's find the moment of the five pound forces which is a little bit more difficult because they're diagonally across the wedge all right so that spans two dimensions so m of the five pound forces is equal to. Now the best way to think about that is to go ahead and realize that the distance between the two lines of action is diagonally across the bottom of the wedge like this which means there is a distance in the x direction and there's a distance in the z direction. So you're going to have two components to the moment and we're not quite sure yet in which directions that is but one thing we could do is for example move one of the one of the forces over in this direction so that we then compare the moments caused by the components of the forces that are diagonally across the x direction so what I'm going to do is we're going to take the five point force and move it temporarily over here because that will then take care of one of the two components of that particular moment. Notice then, if you're now in the back plane here of the wedge, you take your fingers, you point it upward in the direction of 5.4, and then you come down and curl it down on the 5.4s over here, and then you can see that the moment will point in the positive z direction. So one of the components will be 5 points times the 10 feet between them, 5 pounds times 10 feet, and it'll be in a positive z direction. So we'll put that over here, so it would be 5 pounds times 10 feet and that would be in the positive z direction and I keep writing z's but I guess in mechanical engineering we use k, the k unit vector. All right, so that's one of the two components at that moment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, well we can leave that there for now, what we're going to do is we take this force and move it down over here. Well, let me get rid of that, otherwise we get confused. So now I'm going to take this five point force, five pound force, and move it in this direction, put it right over here. So now you can see that you have this couple right here. The distance between them is seven feet. So what you can do is you can take your fingers, point in the direction of the one force, they curl up in the direction of the other force, or if it's easier to do it like this, go up the five pound force here, come down the five pound force and point in this direction. So the moment caused by these two forces across this distance would be in the negative x direction. So it'd be minus five pounds times the distance between it would be seven feet. And that would be in the x direction. So we use the i unit vector and that will be a plus. 
So now we've found the two components of the moment caused by the five pound forces. Now, of course, this five pound force doesn't physically move there. We just put it there in our imagination so we can figure out what the direction of the moment is caused by that component of the two forces um, and find the moment in that respect. All right, now we're down to the last of the three forces or the last of the three couples. That would be the two seven pound forces that are diagonally across the not quite diagonally across, but diagonally across from the halfway point to the corner, from the halfway point to the corner. So what we need to do here is find the distance between those two lines of actions, which is this distance right here. So let me draw this line right there. Okay, so we want to find this distance. Question is, how do we do that? Well, what we can see here is that we have similar triangles. This triangle right here has to be a similar triangle to this triangle right here. So what we have to do is find this angle, which then will give us this angle. How do we know that this angle and this angle is equal? Well, notice that this line is perpendicular to this line, and this line is perpendicular to this line. It has to be perpendicular because we're trying to find the perpendicular distance between the two lines of action. And so therefore we can say if this angle here is equal to this angle there. We can find this angle, therefore we can find this angle, and from that we can find D. Wow, that's a long explanation to find one single constant right here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. First of all, to find this angle, we're going to use the arc tangent of this side over this side. Notice that this is half the distance from there to there. Now, just a moment here. We know what the distance is along the x-axis, but we don't know this distance right here, the distance along the face of the edge. So we have to figure that out first. So this distance from there to there is equal to, well, that's part of this triangle. So let's use the space right here to calculate that. So that would be the height, it's six feet. The length here is 10 feet, and that would be diagonally across. So let's, um, let's call this the length right here. Let's call this distance the length. So we can say that the length is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides. That so would be six feet and 10 feet. So it would be six square plus 10 square. So L would be the square root of 130. Six. All right, so 136, take the square root, that would be 11.66, 11.66 feet. All right, and so half of that, that would be, so this distance here, so take L divided by two, that would be half this distance, so L divided by two is equal to one half times 11.66 feet. So divide by two, and whoop, 11.66 divided by 2 equals, so we get 5.83 feet for this side. We have 7 feet for this side, so here if we're trying to find the angle of theta, we can say that theta is equal to the arc tangent, the arc tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side, that would be of 7 feet divided by 5.83 feet. So take the inverse of that, and times 7, Take the arc tangent, and we get 50.2 feet, or 50, oh, feet, 50.21 degrees. We're not talking about feet here, of course. All right, 50.21 degrees. Now, that would also be this angle right here, so that's the angle theta. We're trying to find D, and the distance across here is 7 feet, so therefore D would be 7 feet times the cosine of that angle because it's the adjacent side. <clears throat> so D is equal to... 7 feet times the cosine of 50.21 degrees. So we take the cosine of that and we multiply the times 7 and we get 4.48 feet. 4.48 feet, which is the distance, the diagonal or the perpendicular distance between the two 7 pound forces. So now we can find the moment of that force. Now notice the moment of that force. If you take your fingers and point them in the direction of this 7-pound force and then curl them around and go to this 7-pound force, notice that the force will be perpendicular to the slanted surface. So what that means is you're going to have a slanted surface like this. There's the wedge. The moment is going to be in this direction. That's going to be the moment of the 7-pound force, like that. And notice that this angle must be the same as the angle between the moment and the perpendicular, which would be the y-axis. Now, the angle right here, let's call this angle phi, 
and the angle phi is the same as the angle phi here, we can find the angle phi by saying that the arc tangent, or phi, is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is 6 feet, divided by the adjacent side, which is 10 feet. So that angle would be 0.6, take the arc tangent of that, and we get 30.96 degrees. 30.96 degrees, so this would be 30.96 degrees. That means that this angle is 30.96 degrees. So we can find the moment of the seven of the seven pound couple, and then we can divide that moment into a vertical component and a horizontal component. Notice what we're going to do. We're going, we're going to find the vertical component right here, and we're going to find the horizontal component, which in this case is going to be the vertical component in the y direction, and the horizontal component will be pointing in the x direction. So this would be the moment of the seven pound force in the x direction, and this is the moment of the seven pound force in the y direction. That will be the x and y components of this moment right here. And let's make sure we get the right sense of the direction. So if we take this force and put it here, that force put it here. So we get the y direction, and then we get the x direction. So they'll both be positive. So we have positive directions on those two moments. All right. So, finding the moment of the seven pound couple is equal to, uh, let's see here, we find the force, that's seven pounds, and we find the distance between them, which we said was 4.48 feet. Okay, and we're going to find the magnitude of that because it'll be perpendicular to the, the slant surface. So, 4.48 times 7 equals 31.36 foot-pounds. So that's 31.36 foot-pounds. That'll be, uh, we don't need the S there. Okay. Next, we're going to find the X component and the Y component. Know that the Y component is parallel or to the side of this angle, and this will be opposite to the angle. So this is the angle phi. So we could say that the moment of the seven pound forces is equal to 31.36 foot-pounds times, to find the x component, we take, take the sine of that angle times the sine of 30.96 degrees, and that would be in the, uh, let's see here, we take the sine, that would be the x component, that would be in the y direction, the I direction, and then plus 31.36 foot-pounds times the cosine of 30.96 degrees, and that would be in the J direction, the Y direction. All right, now calculating what those are. So we take the sine of that, and we multiply that times 31.36, and we get the moment in the X direction will be 16.3 foot-pounds. That'll be in the X direction, plus in the Y direction we get 30.96, take the cosine of that, Oop, take that again, 30.96, take the cosine of that, and multiply that times 31.36 equals, and we get 26.89, 26.89 foot-pounds in the y direction. All right, now we have all the components of the moments of the three couples. Now we can simply combine those three and get the total moment of the three couples together. Let's see what we get. So the total is equal to, well, let's see here, we have an i component here, and we have an i component there. Oh, I never calculated out, did I? This is a minus 35 and a plus 16. I was just wondering where the answer was. So 5 times 7 is minus 35, because I have minus here. So I have a minus 35. 35, that's a minus. We add that to plus 16.32, and we get minus 18.68 foot-pounds in the i direction. So that's combining this this I component to this I component. 
So now we have a J component here and we have a J component there. We add those together so we take 40 plus 26, that would be plus 66.89 foot-pounds in the J direction. And finally, so we have taken care of this one and we have taken care of this one. So all we have left now is the K direction, the Z direction. So we have plus 50 foot-pounds in the Z direction. So this is the total moment caused by the three couples on that wedge. And so you can see there's different techniques to find the moments of e or the components of each moment um, caused by the three couples. So the four pound couples is easy because that's along the bottom side of the wedge. So it's simply the product of the four pounds multiplied times the distance between the 10 feet, the direction is upward. For the second couple, we have the five pound force coming this way, five pound force coming this way. We found the couple by moving the five pounds over here to find the couple in the Z direction, or the component in the Z direction. And then we kept this force over here. We moved this force over on this side, take this distance between them. Notice that in this case, you have a couple in the negative X direction. And finally, to find the couple of the wedge, we, took this, we just took the plane of the wedge, we found the couple perpendicular to the wedge, and then we found the Y and the X component, and then we add all those components together to find the total moment of a situation like this. It's a really good example to see how we can find the moment of those various couples. That's how it's done.